Number 25. Large helium-filled balloons are used to lift scientific equipment to high altitudes. Letter A. What is the pressure inside such a balloon if it starts out at sea level with a temperature of 10 degrees Celsius and rises to an altitude where its volume is 20 times the original and its temperature is negative 50 degrees Celsius? All right, so take a look over here, guys, at a picture, right? We basically have some initial set of conditions and some final set of conditions. So initially, the ball is at sea level. They don't tell us an initial pressure. They do tell us an initial temperature of 10 degrees Celsius, but we have to convert that into Kelvin, right? So you just got to add the 273 to it. So we have this as the initial temperature. And they don't tell us an initial volume. Okay. And finally, right after the balloon, after this thing travels up, 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 it's then going to have some final pressure value. We don't know what it is. But the temperature all the way on up here is going to be negative 50 degrees Celsius. So we have to convert that into Kelvin. And here it is. And then the final volume of this thing is going to expand. They said such that the final volume is 20 times larger than the initial volume. All right. So the setup of this problem sounds to me, anytime you, anytime you feel like you have some initial set and some final set of conditions, use the combined gas law. I have a general video on that. Take a look. It's in the description below. I'll leave a link. So we have PIVI uh, over NI times TI is equal to PFVF over NF times TF. Now, if they don't mention any of these variables in the problem, just cancel them. They don't say anything about the moles changing, so just cancel it, okay? So now I have this formula that the initial pressure multiplied by the initial volume divided by the initial temperature will be equal to the final pressure times the final volume divided by the final temperature. So what we are after is we are somehow after the final pressure, okay? However, they don't tell us an initial pressure. Now, technically, it's not solvable. Okay, so uh, we can assume an initial pressure. They said it was at sea level, but is the, what's the, you know, helium, how much helium is inside the balloon? I don't know. It didn't tell me the gauge pressure. It didn't tell me anything, right? So we can assume an initial pressure if you want, uh, but I'm going to just simply calculate the ratio of the final pressure relative to the initial pressure, all right, for this problem. So basically, I'm looking for, uh, I'm basically going to calculate PF, over pi all right what that means is that basically if you notice take a look at this formula i need to bring the initial pressure out of the numerator on the left and down into the denominator on the right then i'm going to take the final temperature value that's in the denominator on the right and bring it on up to the numerator on the left and then similarly this is in the numerator on the right i'm going to bring it down to the denominator on the left and look lo and behold there is the formula okay so it's going to be uh, actually, I mean, that's it. I, I don't even need to, I'll just erase this part, right? So there's the formula. That's what I'm going to be plugging in. Okay. So now what do we know? Let's plug in what we know. Do we know the final temperature? Uh, yes, we know it's going to be 223, uh, 223 degrees Kelvin, right? So 223. The initial volume, do we know what it is? Nope. Just write VI. Divided by the final volume, do we know what it is? Well, we don't have a number, but we know it's 20 times the initial volume. All right, so write 20 times VI. And then what's the initial temperature? Well, it was the 283. So plug that in. And this is equal to then the ratio of the final pressure relative to the initial pressure. So now notice the VIs will cancel and we can actually calculate this ratio. So simply do 223 divided then by parenthesis 20 times 283. And what do we get? We get a uh, decimal of zero. Oop, one second. We get a value of then 0 0.0394 or so with three sig figs. Zero three, right? Nine four, it looks like. Nine four. And that's then equal to this ratio. All right, so the final pressure relative to the initial pressure will be about three hundredths or four hundredths of the initial. Whatever you assume the initial to be, you can solve it, okay? I don't know what it should be. It doesn't really say, okay? And then uh, that takes care of basically part A and then part B. What is the gauge pressure? Well, that's going to assume whatever number we chose for the initial pressure. Then you can find the gauge pressure. Remember, whatever pressures you plug into this formula better be in terms of absolute pressure, okay? So what is the gauge pressure? I, I don't know uh, because uh, 
Uh, it's totally relative to what the initial absolute pressure was, and they didn't tell us. So again, you can make up a number here. You can say the initial pressure is one atmosphere. That's fine. The initial absolute pressure, that is. And then you can calculate the final absolute pressure, right? If you assume that this number is atmospheric pressure down there, the PI is 1.013 times 10 to the fifth, then multiply that by the decimal 0 0.0394. And then you'd find that your absolute pressure here would be about your absolute pressure, your final absolute pressure would be about 3991 Pascal. And then to find the gauge of that, you'd have to minus that 1.013 times 10 to the fifth. Okay. And if we were to then do that, 0 0.013 times 10 to the fifth, we get a gauge, a negative gauge, right? It would be negative 9. Point, I don't know, 7 times 10 to the 3, looks like fourth, right? 10 to the fourth Pascal. So that would be then the gauge pressure. All right, remember the formula for gauge pressure. Actually, it's in that video, so check it out, the general one on Ideal Guest Law. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this helps. Please remember to subscribe. We'll see you next time.